In the heart of Woodbury, Connecticut, stands the state's oldest inn, the Curtis House. Opened in 1736, the 16-bedroom inn has been owned and run by the Hardesty family for nearly 60 years and is currently being run by Chris Hardesty and his sister, TJ. The Curtis House is haunted. See, the rooms will all be done and the comforters will be nice and neat and tidy and you can go back in five minutes later and it looks like somebody rolled across it. I would walk by a table and two minutes later a plate would fly off of it. I went to light the fireplace and it blew up on me and I got burned. There are spirits here. But spirits aren't paying guests and the Curtis House bedrooms are empty most nights. Right now I would say we're about $100,000 in debt. My dad recently passed away. He had a firm belief that my brother and I could take over the inn. It just left me more determined to succeed. Failing to continue their father's success with the inn has destroyed Chris and TJ's relationship. They hardly ever speak, and when they do, they fight. You're a mean, horrible bitch. If we were married, we'd probably be divorced by now. You come off like this every time, all the time. She's controlling. She wants things done her way. Because when I sit there and give a rule, I want the rule followed. My brother frustrates me to the point where sometimes I would like to just bop him over the head to get rid of some frustrations. Another woman who doesn't listen to a fucking thing I say. Chris and TJ's frustrations with each other and their failing business have made the inn hell for staff. No, my tray. No, my tray. I just well, I don't give a fuck. They just don't care. If you look at your boss who doesn't care, why are you going to care? TJ's not a great leader. She yells at you. I've never heard a thank you. A thank you can go a long ways. Chris, he's just a fat, lazy slob. I shit everywhere. We will get complaints from the customers. We will have problems with dishes. It's just shrugged off. He doesn't give a crap. I've lost respect for TJ and Christopher. We've lost a lot of customers because of management. Since TJ and Chris both took over, everything is going downhill. It has a stain on my pillow. Disgusting. Look at this. Wow. Close the bathroom door. Like a rusted soap holder. Did you have your tetanus shot? Everything wow. sucked. Can you give me another plate without ants on it? I would never come here again. If things don't improve, and fast, a family legacy could come to a tragic end. The Curtis House is a, a huge thing to our family. We've been here for 59 years. We've all pretty much grown up here. Curtis House is like my second home. It has been all these years, the same with my mother and my aunts. If the Curtis House shut down, it would really feel like we lost a part of our family. I'm on my way to the Curtis House. It's Connecticut's oldest inn. I'm excited about it because it's supposed to be one of New England's historical gems. There's nothing wrong with being the oldest. It just depends how much Botox you've had. I'm going to be arriving on a big day for hotels and restaurants across America. But there's something I've got to do first. Hello. Hi, Mum. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I'm just bringing you to wish you Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thank you so much, Gordon. And your flowers were lovely. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Well, I'm sorry I can't be with you. Thank you so much for calling. It's really kind of you. Now, listen, have a great day. Love you lots. Love you. Bye. Bye now. Ah, great, here we are, the Curtis House. Connecticut's oldest inn, lovely. The Happy Mother's Day sign looks a bit crap, but I suppose it's the thought that counts. Look at this place. Built before 1736, incredible. Hi there. Gordon, nice to see you. Well, welcome to the Curtis House. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. And what's your first name? Babe. I don't know you're a babe, but what's your name? Shirley. Shirley. Yeah. Nice to see you, my darling. So, it's Mother's Day. The restaurant's booked. Yes. Today's a big day, right? Yes. Is the hotel full? Not tonight. Oh. How many rooms are booked? Just one. Just one? Yeah. Just me? Yes. So, I'm a little bit early. OK, usually check-in is 3 o'clock. Three. Oh. And there's usually a $10 an hour fee. That's, what, four hours, so $40 already? Yes. So I could save a little bit of money by hanging out and not yes. actually going into the room? Yes. So I want to save myself 40 bucks? Yes. So if I just take a little nap... What is he doing? Mr. Ramsey... <laughs> That's really not appropriate. Mr. Ramsey, Gordon... This isn't really appropriate. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. 
but it doesn't make sense. You charge me $10 an hour. If I just hang out on the sofa, get a little blanket, I can save myself some money. You know, this rule actually went into effect about six months ago, this $10 an hour. Oh, really? Thing. And is it making a big impact on the business? People don't like it. The bookings in the rooms have definitely gone downhill. I think they would be a lot busier if TJ didn't have these ridiculous rules. Um, is that right? My details in here, credit card details? Yes, we take a credit card number to hold the room. No, I appreciate that, but why put it in the book? If that's the house policy, and if the customer insists, then we can't erase it once they check it. <laughs> I got the credit card details of everybody. I will have to call 911. I don't really have to call 911, do I? Babe, see, by the time you've called 911, okay, I've hacked into every credit card in this book and made myself a fortune. So whose policy is this? A bit weird. This is a house policy, um, wow. like TJ lights it. The owner? Yes. Would you not think there's a security oh, breach there? That's why her policy is no one to look in this book except the desk person. Wow. Okay. I can't believe you're going to be in room 16. Why? Because room 16 has a ghost in it. This woman told me who went to room 16. She said the ghost was pulling the blankets off her all night long. And you haven't been drinking sherry? No. Wow. Betty is a ghost at the Curtis house, and people do tell us that. She raises a little bit of havoc with them. She's definitely there. Room 16. A haunted room. My goodness me. <laughs> what is that on there? Is that a footprint? Come on, no way. So what's all that big scuff yes, mark on it? Yes, it looks like a footprint to me. And what's that in there? Dead bugs? Oh, dear. Oh, jeez, look at this one here. I give them a list huh? of the rooms that are coming in. They're supposed to thoroughly check the room. And what's... Do we, do, we, do we have electricity in the house? I couldn't believe what Gordon found in that room. And what is this? Oh. <laughs> Nobody just realized or care. How long have you been working here? Off and on since about 1965. How was it then? Busy all the time. Well, 48 years. That's incredible. So this place means a lot to you. Oh, yes. My second home. Are you connected to the family in any way? TJ's parents and my mother were cousins. So it must be sad for you to see it struggling. Yes, yeah. definitely. And why is it struggling? That's the way our two bosses get along. And was it different when TJ and Chris's parents were running it? Oh, yeah. Much more professional. So why do you stay? And why do you put up with this? I take pride in this place. I like this place. I can see that. I really do, but they don't understand that. The place is really worth it. I really think TJ and Chris are really hurting the business. Somebody needs to knock some sense into them. First impressions, um, dismal. All my credit card details downstairs in that book in such a vulnerable position. One of the busiest weekends ever for this hotel with Mother's Day. I'm the only one staying in the hotel. That's, that's not good. Dust everywhere and a windowsill full of bugs. I don't think I'm gonna get possessed staying here. I think I'm gonna get a disease. Right, go downstairs, have a look. Babe, let me out. Honestly, it must be the bloody ghost. Come on, Betty, let me out. I just want to get some lunch. I've just arrived at the Curtis house in Woodbury, Connecticut, and they've given me a room with a ghost and a door lock that doesn't work. At last. I'm the only guest in this hotel, despite the fact it's Mother's Day and the restaurant is fully booked. Hi. What a dreadful missed opportunity. Hello. Good afternoon. How Welcome are you? To Curtis house. I'm doing well, sir. How about and you? this is? Hi, my name is TJ. TJ. Nice to meet you, sir. The owner. Yes, Nice sir. to see you. Nice to see you. This is my mother. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. Uh, it's an absolute honor to meet you. Are you working today? I have worked every holiday and never got paid. That is ridiculous. You should be sat having lunch, enjoying this business. <laughs> um, should we go to the table? We shall. Time for me to see if the hotel's restaurant <sighs> is as bad as the bedrooms. Right. Hi, my name's Karen. I'll be taking care of you. Are you connected to the family? Yes, I am on TJ and Uncle Chris's niece. OK, nice. And just in a nutshell, um, what's wrong with the place? Now there's no communication between my aunt and uncle. It's gotten a million times worse since my grandfather passed away. It shows, so, doesn't it? Yeah. I asked Bernard to come here because my family desperately needs his help. They've been struggling for way too long. They don't know what to do. We really need his help. This is the dinner menu. <laughs> wow. What would you say? Crab cakes? The crab cakes. 
Yeah, you, yes. Oh, no, don't look at me like that. That's slight hesitation. <laughs> they're, they're hit or miss. They're, they're hit or miss? Yeah. Uh, crab cakes, uh, crab what cakes? else? Um, I'll take some calamari. Okay. Um, Joanne, let's have a little taste of the burger. How do you like it cooked? Medium rare, please. Medium rare. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Mike. All right, listen, this is Ramsey. Crab cakes, calamari with gorgonzola. When he wants the burger, medium rare. I am very proud of my food. Whenever I eat other places, I think we're better than 90% of them. Do we have calamari on the line or no? The crab cakes. Lovely. Um, let's do this together. Do you mind? Please? Come on, you're supposed to be my, my wingman. <laughs> I, I had to swallow it. It was not enjoyable. Hit or miss? For me, that's a miss. Yeah, it's not. Holy shit. These I warned you about. You did warn me about. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. How was lunch, my darling? It wasn't very good. It, everything feels institutional. Right. You know, like we just got out of the hospital and it's the best food we could get. I'm sorry. It's not a nice surprise for Mother's Day, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> Calamari, and then I'll have the, bur the burger. Hey, cocktail sauce, pork and lemon. Monkey dish for the marinara. <laughs> the fried calamari. Can you hear any crispiness? That's limper than my granddad's dick. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That's disgusting. It's awful, it's awful. I'll bypass. All set? You. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, what would you like? The calamari was mostly greasy. You know I have to bring this food out. You know he's going to critique it. And you know I'm going to come right back with it in one second because you don't care. You're just sending me like shit on a plate, basically. Are these the mushrooms, Mike? My burger. Your burger. With the Thank you very much. Fries. Jesus, where's my burger? What a mess. Did you tell them it was medium rare? Mm -hmm. Jesus, it's raw. That is not medium rare. What a shame. That is dreadful. My uncle can't cook a burger medium rare. Are you freaking kidding me? Can you take me through and introduce me to the chef? Of course. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, your uncle. Yep. Uncle. Uncle Chris. Chris. I can't believe how bad my food was. I've got to see the kitchen in action for myself. Right back here is my Hi. cousin Mike. Hi, Chef. And this uh, is Chef Ramsey. This, this and is Uncle Chris. OK, so TJ's little brother. Yes, baby right. brother. Mike Trudeau. Mike Trudeau, good Very to see nice you, brother. Likewise, and this is Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Fire, you have a mushroom wrap, one all day, and a primavera. Pane. <laughs> Okay. Am I okay? Yeah, I've been here 10 minutes. I'm amazed. None of you even asked me how the lunch was. What's most shocking isn't the food, or that they have zero interest in my experience as a diner. It's the fact that Chris and his sister don't exchange a single word. They won't even look at each other. You could cut the atmosphere in here with a knife. Wow. This guy must really hate mothers, the way he's treating these dishes. You put food on a plate like you're slopping it. Can I borrow that cloth a minute? You're wiping plates with this. You don't care. I don't know about that. To say that and not know me at all doesn't have any foundation. Jesus Christ. Is anything cooked to order here? French fries, salads. French fries and salads, yeah. shit. 20 fucking dollars a head for that. Chris doesn't seem like an owner or a chef. He isn't even cooking. He's just heating things up. Chris, you got two seconds, please? Here's where I'm getting frustrated. You own the place. You cook like you hate the place. Come on, Chris, talk to me, please. If you're not going to talk to me, then I'm wasting my time here. What's the point? The Curtis house in Woodbury, Connecticut is falling apart because owners Chris and TJ won't talk to each other, and it's affecting the inn's guests as well as the food. That is dreadful. I don't know if there are ghosts upstairs, but there's definitely a dead man walking in the kitchen. You own the place. You cook like you hate the place. This place is a mess. It's like nobody cares here. One thing's for sure. It is not happy fucking families, let me tell you. Stories and legends of southwestern Connecticut. Wow.
Room 16 is host to a doting female paying special attention to male guests staying in the room. She tucks them into the bed and may even crawl next to them. What? At least they've got one regular guest. Betty, it's you. Okay. Find out. Good night, Betty. I didn't get a visit from Betty the ghost, but I still had a rough night's sleep. Wow, I feel so dusty after last night. I hope Betty's not watching. Man. Shit, that's cold. Oh, man. This inn has been in the Hardesty family for four generations, and I can't understand why TJ and Chris have no appreciation for what has been given to them. I've called a staff meeting, and I'm hoping this will get them talking before they lose their family heirloom. I just want to have a quick chat with you all. My first impressions have not been good, but I struggle to believe that you two are brother and sister. It is shocking. No communication, not even looking at each other. Why can't you two at least talk to each other. Get frustrated with some things, and all the time we talk and talk about doing shit, and we never get anything done. And do you think this is what your father wanted? No, absolutely not. What's wrong with this place? I feel a lot of management. You know, a thank you would be nice every once in a while. You know, that's all I ask for. I'm more hurt than angry because I care so much about them. You sound like you've been pushed to breaking point. Yeah. I felt like TJ and Christopher don't give a shit. I don't know how much more I can take. Cheyenne, when did the drive go out of the kitchen? When did the essence, when did the word passion disappear? I've never seen all three in that kitchen. Ever? Ever. I feel like I am the voice of truth. Everybody else, either one, doesn't care, or two, they just don't see it. I've been saying since day one that this kitchen is a joke. There are no standards in the kitchen, chef. It's depressing. Fuck Cheyenne. His opinion doesn't really matter to me. Never has, never will. I watched you in the kitchen. It was like you were just hired as an extra. And TJ, your feud with your brother is clearly getting in the way of running your business. The staff are desperate. And you know what hurts? It's a blessing that you've got this place. The potential is huge, yet you walk around and treat it like it's a curse. I came to your inn as a guest, and I am not fucking happy. Both of you are sleepwalking to disaster. Go to your office and at least try to talk. If you can't talk, you might as well close the doors right now. You know, in the 30 years I've been here, I never had anybody ever complain like that. And it makes it tough, and then throw it in my face even harder, you know? Hi. You okay? No. What's wrong? You really gave me a wake-up call because this place is toxic. TJ has issues. I think she's a control freak. And you talking to them, they're standing there. As far as I'm concerned, they made asses out of themselves. I'm done here. I cannot work here no more. This is your life. This is your... Yeah, and it's destroying... I can see that. They don't care about us. They need to hear it from you. Okay. I can't believe it's come to this. As far as I'm concerned, TJ and Christopher, they're not going to change. It's a total shame. Hey. hey. How are you? Not good. I, I, I can't, I can't work here anymore. I'm sorry. It's destroying me. I don't like it. You know, I care about every one of my staff no, here. you don't. You make people feel uncomfortable. And I'm telling you, I don't know whether anybody else is going to speak up. I'm not saying that I'm perfect by any means at all either. But, you know, I don't think that there should be personal attacks. This is the way I feel, whether you guys like it or not, because it's just killing me. I feel as though there's no future. I'm done. You're giving me a look like every single bit of that is justified. A lot of the shit she says is true, TJ. Nobody wants to fucking talk to you. I am not gonna have her tell me that I'm this mean, horrible monster that doesn't give a shit Everybody about people. Everybody thinks you're a mean, horrible bitch. Everybody. I really think you need to fucking talk to somebody or do something before you're in a padded fucking room. I disagree. The proof is in the pudding. You're strung out, you're fucking tweaked right to the fucking end every day. 
because you don't have any help, and then you turn into a miserable fucking psycho bitch. Shut the fuck up. She didn't know what she was fucking talking about. The broken relationship between the owners of Connecticut's Curtis House Inn has gotten to an all-time low. Everybody thinks you're a mean, horrible bitch. I asked them to talk for the first time in months, but all they did was yell at each other. Shut the fuck up. I'll keep this brief. I've got to get them to see if they don't communicate, this inn will shut its doors. I don't know what it's going to take to wake you up. You've already lost one of your employees because you can't get it together. You're starting to resent each other and the work you're doing. Oh, I, I agree, but I think it's hard to come to work knowing the minute you walk in the door till you walk out the back door, there's a disagreement in every room you're in. It used to be that we talked things through. We just stopped doing it. Just been frustrated. Frustrated every fucking day. For three years? Yeah. You know, if you got so frustrated with me three years ago that you just stopped talking, it's horrible. Oh. Every fucking time we talk, it turns into an argument, and I was just avoiding the arguments. You know, just got fucking fed up. We're not talking three months, three years. When was the last time either of you stayed here and see how the guests experienced it through their eyes? You've I've never, never done it. It shows. Can both of you come with me, please? There's something in my room I'd like to show you. If Chris and TJ won't listen to each other, maybe they'll listen to the people who could keep their business alive. Please, both of you take a stand over there. Here we have some guests, and I think you're going to find that their feedback invaluable. Anna, let's start off with you first. Just pulling back the comforter. Honestly, it looked like the sheets hadn't been changed. And the chair kind of picked up the cushion, and there was, for lack of a better word, a skid mark on the bottom of the cushion. It was disgusting. Uh, the pillows had some stains on them. Insects on the windowsills. It looks like the windows haven't been washed in a while. We had uh, flowers like in here. They had like an inch of dust on them. We did not have a bathroom door. We had a wicker like divider, and when you tried to pull it, it just kind of falls over. Wow. Jump in, guys. I mean, I, you I know, know these are customers that are paying money. It's very disheartening. I, I've never got responses like this before, and I, I wish I had. Can I talk to you about the arrival? When you arrive, you hand over your personal credit card details, addresses, your cell numbers. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens to your details after you've left? Because in this book is all of your credit card details. Oh, here we go. This is it. This is the hammer. It is vital information of your credit card details, your addresses, your cell numbers, in black and white. This is a ticking time bomb. How's that make you feel? With everything that's going on nowadays with the identity theft and everything like that, I'm not pleased at all about that. Would you be so kind just to leave me here with the owners for two minutes, please? I appreciate your feedback. Thank, Thank you, guys. Jesus. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, no. Story of my fucking life. You asked me here to come and help you. But you both need to change your ways. You won't open up to me, and you won't open up to each other. Your business is literally dying because you won't communicate. But it's like you don't care. I can't even start to move forward because I'm not feeling the fucking the hunger that both of you want this place to work. So I'm just saying, fuck it. Sell it. I'm going downstairs. <sighs> not again. Oh my gosh, Gordon can't even find the solution. Takes two, takes two hands to get out. I love this place. I love this place with all my heart. But the way things are going, the revelation is it's just not worth it. I'm really struggling to get through to Chris and TJ. The person who knows them better than anyone is their mother, Trudy. And I'm hoping she may help me to unlock that divide between them and hopefully get these two back on track. Darling, I came to see you this morning because I need your help. I'm struggling to get through to TJ and I'm struggling to get through to Chris. They don't communicate, they don't drive the business forward. They just bicker and butt heads. Why is that? I don't know. I don't know why. 
How much does that in mean to you? I mean, what, what does it stand for in your family? It stands for a lot of homework, if nothing else. Yeah. We all had to work in there. You should be reaping the rewards of the family success in nearly six decades. But how would it make you feel if this business was sold to a different family now? I mean, all that work of you and your husband's commitment. I don't want another bitter change yet. I really don't want to see it go down the street tomorrow. I want to see if those two can't come back together and get it back on their feet. Yeah. I really want to help your family, and I really want to keep this business alive for another 60 years. So we're going to have to get them to talk to each other. Otherwise, the business is doomed. Well, you're right. And I need your help. Please. You got it. Thank you. I'll see you back at the inn. OK. OK. Thank you, my love. Coming up. For the two of you to be able to communicate as brother and sister is more important than even the sin. Has change come too late for the Curtis House? The Curtis House in Woodbury, Connecticut, is sinking because the two owners won't speak to each other. And despite the hotel's dire situation, I've been unable to get through to Chris and TJ. Come on, Chris, you don't care. So, I went to see their mum. And I need your help. You got it. Now, Trudy has organised a family intervention to let TJ and Chris know how much they're fighting is hurting the inn and everyone around them. Hi, guys. Oh, boy. First of all, uh, to you guys. I appreciate you being here. Your mum has brought everyone together. Just to talk to you from the bottom of their hearts. I hope this is going to open your eyes, because right now, I don't know what will. Who would like to go first? Tess, what have you got to say, my darling? Mom, I think that you're spread way too thin. We think that the mounting work is getting to be too much. You're getting frustrated, and eventually it's bound to spill over. But I think that for the two of you to still be able to talk and communicate as brother and sister is more important than even the sin. I've sat with both of you many times, talked about all the problems. You guys just go back and forth. There's no resolve, nothing. You have to get on the same page about it. It's way too much for everyone in this place. It's awful. Something has to change. Thank you, darling. Babe, darling. Okay, TJ and Chris, I really hope we can all get through this. This is so important. You've been here for 48 years. You know this place better than anybody. The two of you were so close for so many years, I know, because I was there and I've seen it. We used to come to work and do our job and really enjoy working with each other. And with both your stubbornness, you took that all away. Since you two stopped speaking, everything is going downhill. I want to help you two get back together like it used to be. And I know the Curtis House can be that way again, and only you two can make that happen. We all want to be there for you and help you. And with a lot of hope and help from Gordon's expertise, we can get Connecticut's oldest in the Curtis House, back to where it should be. And you two then can be very, very proud of what you accomplished. Trudy, my darling, can these two make it work? They sure can. Sure can they have. And we're behind them, 100. They are desperate, beyond belief, to help you make this place work. You both have to step up. When he walks through the door, I have to be the person that's there for him. That's it. But I want, him, I want him to be my guy here, and I want to be the person he goes to. Chris, do you want to make this work? Chris and TJ's family have come together for a last-ditch attempt to save the Curtis House Inn by getting them to talk to each other again. Now Chris has to decide if he'll commit to the inn or walk away. Chris, do you want 
to make this work? Absolutely. It just sucks that we've gone this far. Yeah, I'd stop being a jerk, especially to my sister. Well, right now, I really just want to make my mother proud and my family proud. It's been a family establishment all these years, and I have to make them proud again. <laughs> Christopher and I let everything else get in the middle of our relationship. We have to be each other's number one. You know, family first. We can do it. <laughs> family united makes a stronger front. You ready? Yes, absolutely. That was the first time we've seen that in three years. It was like, we did it. With Chris and TJ ready for change, my design team has worked all night to transform the inn. And now it's time to reveal the new look to the team. Welcome to the new Curtis House, Connecticut's oldest inn, run by an extraordinary family, providing a warm and welcoming experience for other families. Excited? I can't wait. You're going to love it. Are you ready to go inside? Yes, we are. Let's go. Follow me, please. Please come in. Oh, oh my god. Oh, Look at god. this. Wow. wow. <laughs> oh my god. That is awesome. Welcome to your amazing new lobby. Come through, ladies. Oh. A decluttered, very welcoming, warm space. Over here we have this stunning Silhouettes, they are historical portraits of all your family. Wow. <laughs> TJ, come here, come over here. You okay? <laughs> come here. The silhouettes of the family and the staff, it put me over the edge because this business was built on that. You need to celebrate your family history, not be trapped by it. Now, one thing that concerned me on my first arrival was the check-in, and that reservation book that was gathering all that sensitive personal data. Come over, please. Oh, my God, what is that? Oh, my God, a computer. <laughs> now, we know they didn't have these in 1754, but you can, OK? <laughs> the credit cards and all the personal details will be safe. We've had that red book for years. I'm so happy it's gone. If Aunt TJ brings the red book back out, I will burn it. I'll do anything to make sure we never see that thing again. I'd like to take you upstairs now uh, to my room. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. You'll be pleased to know we've repaired the door handle so it actually works. Welcome. Oh, oh my God. God. Crazy, huh? Wow. Come on. Come on. Have a look. Wow. wow. Again, steeped in history, mm -hmm. but encapsulating that modern elegance. The panels on the wall that elevate the scope, the depth of the room. TJ. Betty, the ghost, has her own cushion. <laughs> I think Betty's going to be very happy with what Gordon did. I think she's going to love the fact that she's become an elegant feature. So, babe, I want you to come here, please. <laughs> and stand there. Now, relax, turn around. I want you to look at the eyes of that picture. <laughs> and, move, and, move, and, move, and move your head from left to right. <laughs> yeah? oh, no. And the eyes move. The eyes follow you around the room. <laughs> oh, my God. The eye portrait, it was really creepy, but I would try to stay in there. I might have another room on backup just in case I couldn't make it through the night, but I would definitely give it a try. Ready to see another one? This one you're going to love. It's my favorite one. Let's go. There we go. Oh, my God. How beautiful wow. is that? Oh, my God. It's gorgeous. Uh, I really feel the changes are going to help TJ and I get some things back into focus. My father would definitely like a lot of the, the changes. I wish he was here to see it. Now, you won't believe what I have downstairs for you. Let's go. Coming up, I give Babe a surprise she'll never forget. Go ahead, a French kiss. Mm. Oh, <laughs> I've just shown the family their new oh, lobby. Oh, my God. And the new bedrooms. Oh my god. Now it's time to show them the new improvements to the hotel restaurant. The inn has been in the Hardesty family for four generations. Oh, wow. Wow. So I've come up with a new menu that reflects the family's history. The Curtis House family favourites. Oh 
Let's start off with Grandma Trudy's crab cake. <laughs> they hit every single time. TJ's grilled salmon and corn Johnny cakes. Chris's country fried pork chop dipped in buttermilk, served with mac and cheese, gravy, and green beans. You're only allowed it once a week, man. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're cooking your family's food, it's going to be so much more love, so much more care to what you're serving. Now, tuck in and enjoy. Oh, that sauce is unbelievable. I'm really excited to show off the new menu. This is a good one. <laughs> Finally, now, this is something I can tell people it's really, really good. Everything here is delicious. Very, very, very good. It's like a new ball game. Right. A whole mm -hmm. new ball game. Just like us. Mm. Tonight is the relaunch of the new improved Curtis House. As the guests arrive, there's a new sense of warmth and welcome from TJ and the staff. Welcome to the Curtis House. How are you? I love the new work, and I can't wait for our customers to come in because I want to see their reaction. Wow. Got our own little fireplace. I love how it has that nice, cozy cottage feel, but yet in modern. This is definitely going to get people in the rooms, and we're proud to send them up there. Hey, Welcome hey. to the Curtis House. Thank you. Let me take you upstairs to your room. This is delicious. Down in the restaurant, Chris is taking charge and putting in the care he needs to make his diners happy. Crab cakes need to go in the oven, please. It feels very good to have the hardest name on the menu. You know, it's where it should be. Definitely giving me a little more focus, a little more direction, and a little more immediate pride. Yeah, and use a spoon for that, please. Thank you. Come on, Chris, we good? We good? <laughs> more importantly, TJ and Chris are working together and communicating. Is that going? Yes. And then we got a clam and a slider coming. Yes. I think my brothers and my attitude has changed dramatically. Plating my clams right now. Plating now, thank you. My brother and I, our backs working very well together. How are we doing, Jordy? We're doing fine. I'm getting all kinds of compliments again. Oh, baby, you're all right, Ma. You're all right. It's definitely one of the most important things to me is seeing my mother and my sister and my family happy. TJ and Chris are finally working together. But I have one last thing I need to do to help turn this business around. You must be Donna. Good it's to see you. Thank you. I've asked a paranormal expert to investigate the spirits haunting the inn. Somebody here? Camera's acting really funky. Boo. <laughs> you are officially a member of the Haunted Connecticut Tours. <laughs> and you are now officially haunted. Congratulations, my darling. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hang that up with pride. Now that the Curtis House is certified as haunted, and on the ghost tour, it will attract even more business and help this family get out of debt. Uh, ladies, I'm going to say goodbye. I'm not ready for you to leave. No, TJ. you just can't leave. I know, my job is done. You two have been amazing. If they stop talking to each other, call me, please. I'm going to miss you. Oh, no, come on, babe. I'm going to miss you, too. Little kiss. And two. Do you know they give you four in Paris? Yes. Have you had a French kiss? Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Gordon did give me two kisses on my cheek. <laughs> yes, I haven't washed it yet. <laughs> OK, my time is done. I'm going to leave you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Don't let 60 years of hard work disappear. Absolutely not. Promise me you're going to continue talking to Absolutely. your sister. The minute you don't, the place is doomed. And you have a beautiful, beautiful in here. Thank you very much. I can't wait to come back. Go ahead, Take care of you, Tom. Yeah. Look after each other, please. Thank you. Gordon Ramsay put some life back into us. Good night, Betty. Well. Gordon showed us where our relationship should be and will be from this point on. I'm forever grateful to Gordon Ramsay for coming in here and straightening us out. I ain't afraid of no ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Since my visit, TJ and Chris have learned how important it is to work together. Hot roasted chicken mashed only, turkey as it comes. Gordon pulled off something that I wasn't sure was going to be able to be mended. I think I got my best friend back, and he's not going anywhere this time. There you go. It's definitely an eye-opening experience. It's not a daily grind now. Bookings for the hotel are up. If there's any spirits present in this room... And it's bringing in tourists who want to get a glimpse of Betty the Ghost. Good evening. Welcome to the Curtis House. If Gordon didn't come, I think we were pretty much done. You saved my family, and this feels like you gave us our life back.